if you're wondering this morning how you made it this far, yeah. the choir just told us it's by the grace of God. Yeah. Some of us think that we did it all on our own, My that we didn't need help from nobody. But God is here to remind us that he's the one in charge. And it's by his grace that we are what we are. And it's by his grace that we are going to make it all the way through. Amen. Amen, somebody. Good morning, Union Branch. It's been a long time since I've been in this pulpit to preach. And it was by God's grace that I'm here today. And I don't take God's grace for granted. I don't take it for granted That's right. because it costs a lot for God's grace. It costs Jesus' life yeah. for God's grace. Oh, yeah. And so I stand here before you thanking God that I'm able to stand here before you. Oh, yeah. Amen. Oh, yeah. Amen. Let's give this great choir hand clap of praise. As broad as God's grace. And wherever Pastor Riolan and Reverend Cynthia are this morning, we send them our love. And we ask that God's grace be with them as well. Because when it's all said and done, this was God's doing. This was not any man's doing. Man can't send you to hell and man can't send you to heaven. All man can do is pray for you. And some of them we don't want us praying, want them praying for us. It's God's grace, it's his doing. Let us pray. Our Father and our God, God is with a humble heart that I stand before you and this congregation today. God, I may not know all that you're doing in this season, but what I do know is that I must trust you. God, you have been more to me than I could imagine. You've been my healer. You've been my deliverer. You've been my savior, and you are my Lord. No, God, I ask that I decrease, but Christ must increase, and that the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable to you, O God, my strength, my strength. If you would join me this morning and turn to your Bibles to Romans 8, verses 31 through 39. Romans 8, verse 31 through 39. A very familiar passage. Romans 8, 31 through 39. If you have it, say amen. amen. Need a little bit more time? Amen. The word of God reads thusly. What shall we say about such wonderful things as these? If God is for us, Who can be against us? Since he did not spare even his own son, but he gave him up for us all, won't he also give us everything else? Who dares accuse us whom God has chosen for his own? No one. For God himself has given us right standing with himself. 
who then will condemn us? No one. For Christ Jesus died for us and was raised to life for us. And he is sitting in the place of honor at God's right hand pleading for us. Can anything ever separate us from Christ's love? Come on now. Mm. Does it mean he no longer loves us if we have trouble or calamity or persecuted or hungry or destitute or in danger or even threatened with death? As the scripture says, for your sake, we are killed every day. Mm -hmm. We are being slaughtered like sheep. No. Despite all these things, overwhelming victory is ours through Christ who loved us. And I am convinced, I am convinced, I am persuaded that nothing can ever separate us from God's love. Neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons. Neither our fears for today, nor our worries for tomorrow. Not even the powers of hell can separate us from God's love. No power in the sky above or in the earth below. Indeed, nothing in all creation will ever be able to separate us from the love of God that has been revealed in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen, amen, amen. <coughs> the word of the Lord for the people of God. And after hearing God's word, my title for today is We Can't Lose with God on Our Side. We can't lose with God on our side. Mm -hmm. Now I'm about to do something that I am about to say something that y'all know not that I had trouble with it, I used to always kid him, pastor about using sports analogy. <laughs> he, he know I didn't like him. And every time before he was said, he would say, Reverend Wynn, I'm, I got to do it. <laughs> so now I tell Pastor, I got to do it. Yeah. All right. The 1992 United States Men Olympic basketball team, uh-huh. nicknamed the Dream Team, yeah. was the first American Olympic team to feature active professional players from the National Basketball Association. The team had been described as the greatest sports team ever assembled. And some of the original members that you all will probably recognize, because even I recognize some of them. Michael Jordan, Scottie Pippen, Magic Johnson, Larry Bird, Charles Barkley, Patrick Ewing, and Carl Malone. Each had different strengths and weaknesses. But when they joined together, Uh they were unbeatable. So how did they do in the Olympics? They won the gold medal and were considered to be the greatest team ever. Why did they win? It was simple. They believed they could. So the Apostle Paul in this letter that he wrote to the Roman church talks about what I call the Christian dream team. Now just in case there's somebody in here that don't know who Paul is, I'm going to let Paul introduce himself to you. In Romans 1, Paul says that Paul, a servant of Christ Jesus, called to be an apostle and set apart for the gospel of God. That's who Paul says he is. Paul didn't say he had all these degrees and all these letters behind his name. 
Paul didn't say he went to the Samuel DeWitt School of Theology at Virginia Union. Paul didn't say he had all this money. Paul didn't say anything about himself other than that he's a servant of Christ Jesus. Called to be an apostle. So now I have introduced you to Paul. He said this team has only three members who all have equal ability and even though they are three, they are called by one name. All right. Not Michael Jordan, not Scottie Pippen, not Magic Johnson, but they're called by one name. See, they can operate separately as well as collectively with no problem. The basketball's dream team had one goal in mind, and that was to win a gold medal. But the Christian dream team goal is to call people to Christ for salvation, to freely receive the eternal gold medal. This Christian dream team has no weaknesses, never gets tired, so they never slumber or sleep. They're always working. Who is this Christian dream team, you may ask? Some of y'all may have already guessed. Is God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Now, we all can agree on one thing. We are living during turbulent times. Every time you look around, the news is always bad. We got a person in the White House who's lost his mind. And then we got people following who've lost their mind. And it seems that trouble is all around and we just can't get a break. If it was not one thing, it's something else. And some of us, if we were to tell the truth and shame the devil, we're ready to throw in the towel. But before we do, let's hear what Paul has to say about it. You see, he knows a little something about turbulent times. And he wants us to know that we who believe in God's Son for salvation have joined God's dream team. And he also wants us to know that we can't lose with God on our side. All right. So let's examine how Paul breaks it down for us and see if we can all get on the same page here. Right. Paul is conducting a question and answer session in this part of the letter. I call, you know, you hear people say this is a Q and A time. Right. He is both asking the question and he's answering them. Uh-huh. See, God does not expect us to try to figure it out on our own, even though we do try. And that is why the Holy Spirit is on the team. Yeah. He's the spirit of truth, uh-huh. and he's gonna guide us into all the truth. Yeah. So the first question he asks is, what shall we say to such wonderful things as these? Uh-huh. Well, before we hear Paul's answer, Let's find out what the wonderful things he's talking about. If you slide on up to verse 29, you'll hear these words. For God knew his people in advance. Remember what he told Jeremiah, he said, I knew you when you were in your mother's womb. And before you had done anything good or bad, I loved you. So God loved us from the very beginning. He said, and he chose them to be like his son. He chose them to be like his son. But only those who would accept Jesus as the Messiah. Only those who would believe in him. Only those who would accept the gospel. He chose them to become his son. And then after he chose them, he said his son would be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. That's why we are called brothers and sisters. Christ is the first fruit. He's the first one. And the rest of us came after him and we are, and he calls us brothers and sisters. You thought just your brothers and sisters were your biological 
family. But there are some people in here that their friends are closer than their brothers and their sisters. But this is the family of God we are talking about. You can't come in this family just by being a friend of somebody else. You can't come in this family just by relating to somebody else. You've got to be born from above and get into the family that way. You can't buy your way in. You can't talk your way in. You can't slip in like a thief. You can't do any of these things. You have to be born again. That's what Christ told Nicodemus. You got to be born again. And having called them, and having chosen them, he called them to come to him. Thank you. And having called them, he gave them right standing with himself. That means he forgave us of our sins. God forgave us. God forgave us. And some of us know that we did some pretty horrible things oh in the eyes of God. Yeah. But he forgave us. He forgave us. Uh-huh. And having given them the right standing with himself, he gave them his glory. Because one day, one day we're going to have a resurrected body like Jesus. Yeah. We're going to be just like him. And that's good news, people. In this world of bad news, that's good news. So Paul asked, what is your response to this good news? So he answers the question, if God is for us, then who can be against us? That if is because, because God is for us, then who can be against us? In other words, we can't lose with God on our side. All right. Paul then reasons with us. He, he lets us know how God gave his best. His best. Sad to say some of us do everything else with our money and give God the rest. But God gave his best. So it stands to reason that if he gave us his best, then what's the rest of the stuff? What's the rest of it? And he said he will give us, he will not withhold anything from us that we need. So I firmly believe with all of my heart that when bad things happen to us, God is looking to see how we will respond. Will we remember his promises to us? His promise to never leave us nor forsake us. His promise to be a present help in times of trouble. His promise to give us a peace that passes all understanding. Uh-huh. Will we remember how he was there for us in the past when we did not know how we would get through? Yeah. And I don't know about you, but I've been in some sticky situations. Oh, yeah. When the only place I could go was God. Because nobody else wanted to have anything to do with me. They said, you got yourself in that mess? Now get yourself out. So I took my little self on to God. And like so many of us, he said, God, if you only get me out of this thing here, I promise to serve you all the days of my life. Until the next time. God, if you get me out of this mess, I promise to serve you all the days of my life. Until the next time. The songwriter says God's amazing grace that they just finished singing about brought us through many toils and snares. And if he did it then, he'll do it again. Our outlook determines our outcome. Our outlook determines our outcome. So if our outlook says to us, oh, We ain't gonna never get out of this. Guess what? You're never gonna get out. But if our outlook says, I will trust the Lord no matter what, then what's the outcome? You're gonna get through. 
Our outlook determines our outcome. Keeping our eyes on God, we will discover that God causes all things, all things to work for good to them that love him and are called according to his purpose. They don't work for good for everybody. Yeah. And they may not be good to us. Mm-hmm. They may not even sound good. Yeah. But God is going to work them for our good. Mm-hmm. And so that it all comes out in the end. Yeah. Now in the Old Testament, there was a king named Jehoshaphat. Mm-hmm. He was the king of Judah during that time. And he was told that a vast army was coming against him to destroy God's people. Jehoshaphat started remembering how God helped him in the past, and so he began to pray. So when we remember what God did for us in the past, then that's the time to pray. That's the time to pray. And the last line of Jehoshaphat's, Jehoshaphat's prayer was this. We don't know what we're going to do. But our eyes are watching God. Mm-hmm. Our eyes are watching you, God, to see what you're going to do. Mm-hmm. And after Jehoshaphat prayed, God sent a messenger to encourage his people. He told them, he said, do not be afraid. Yeah. Union Branch, do not be afraid. He said, Don't not, do not be dismayed, for the battle is not yours. The battle is God's. Yeah. How come we trying to fight a, a fight that we can't win? That's right. But we can't lose if God is on our side. Mm-hmm. We got to get out of God's way. Yeah. And we got to let him who called us to himself fight our battles. The storms are going to come. Your hearts are going to break sometimes. You're going to face sorrows. Mm -hmm. But the Lord will deliver you from all of them, not necessarily by removing them. See, that's what we want. We don't want to feel no pain. Mm -mm, That's that's not good. (laughs) Who want to hurt? Nobody. So the first thing we ask God, remove it. But what he will do, he will help us to endure it. Even Christ prayed. He said, you know, I I know if if you could make another way other than the cross. But what did he say? Not as I will, but as you will. And we have to say the same thing. See, God could have wiped their enemies out from the face of the earth. But instead he told them to go down against them. Here was this vast army coming against the Israelites. And God told them to go down against them. And then he says something that is so amazing that only God could say. He said, you will not need to fight in this battle. He said, stand firm. Hold your position and see the salvation of the Lord. So if we just stand still and know that he is God and let God be God, we will not go through this thing long. God will send us the right one at the right time for the right reason because he loves God, because he loves the people. We just have to stand still, stand firm. Hold your position and see the salvation of the Lord on your behalf. So what did the people do when they heard this? They fell down and they began to worship God. And if I can imagine what they were saying. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. The battle wasn't won yet Uh because God told them the battle wasn't even there. He said, you're not going to even have to fight. So Union Branch, we're not going to even have to fight. And we're going to be like the old saints say, we're going to wonder how we got over. We're going to wonder how we got over. Because we can't lose. 
with God on our side. Oh, yeah. Say it with me. We can't lose with God on our side. It is impossible yeah. for us to lose. The creator of heaven and earth is on our side. You don't need anybody else fighting alongside of you but God. Ask David when he fought Goliath. Before Goliath could even think straight, David had already knocked him dead. I imagine he was still going, oh, what happened? I, I didn't even see that storm coming. And that's how we will be. And then the second and the third question that Paul asked, they're, they're basically the same, said, who will accuse us before God? And who is he that condemns us? The all-knowing, the all-powerful. God knows what we did, and he still forgave us. Not because we were worthy of righteousness, or because of our own righteousness, but because of Jesus, who died for us and paid the penalty for our sins. And now he is creating this new creation committed to serving God. Let me give you a simple example of this. Y'all know that I work for the BGC, right? So oftentimes I have to call and get food for different events or whatever. So I called this restaurant one day and I said, you know, we need to order this food. And I paid for it with the company's credit card. But someone else went to pick it up for me. And when they got there, the people wanted to charge them again. So they called me on the phone and I had to remind them that the bill was paid in full. So we have to remind the devil that the bill is paid in full. Yeah. Yeah. We don't owe anything else. That's right. We don't have no money, no way. Uh -huh. We can't pay it. Yeah. Jesus had to pay it. That's right. Jesus said when he died on the cross, our bill was paid in full. So no one can come back or can accuse you and condemn you. Because God has, has pronounced us not guilty. Ain't God good, y'all? Yeah. Ain't God good? Yeah. Then somebody in here ought to tell the Lord, thank you. Thank you. Hallelujah. See, there's always somebody around to throw your past in your face. Because they were with you when you were of the world doing everything that you were big and bad enough to do. They know all your secrets. You know what I say to them? When they come to me and say, I remember when you were, yeah, you right. I ain't gonna argue with them. They were right there looking at me. I wasn't no ghost. I wasn't invisible. Yeah, you're right. I used to be yeah. terrible. Uh. I used to be doing all those things. Uh. I used to say those things. Yeah. But thanks be to God. Oh, yeah. Thanks be to God. Yeah. He has wiped my slate clean yeah. and given me a new heart. He's given me a new song to sing, and he's given me a whole new attitude. And I'm not talking about a Patti LaBelle attitude. I'm talking about a God attitude that looks to please him only. That's not worried about what people are going to say, what people are going to think. I remember after I got sick and I couldn't walk. And so I knew I wanted to come to church. And I didn't want to see it on no stream, and that don't work right anyway. <laughs> what I wanted to do is to be in the midst of God's people and hear the word for myself. And a thought came to me, yeah, but they're going to see that you can't walk. And that thing stopped me for a minute. 
But then I say, but look how much we will celebrate when they do see me walking. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. I came in here in a wheelchair, but now I'm standing for God. Yeah. Sometimes you need to let people see your suffering so they can rejoice with you when God delivers you. And we think the only time we can give God praise is when we've been delivered, when we've been healed, when we're not struggling anymore. But the time to do it when you're in the midst of it. Because when you come out, they will know it's God and God only. The first time I came in here, I saw Reverend Riola and there's two people. He had two heads. But you know what I did? I closed one eye and I looked at him with just one. There is a way. God will give you a way. See, now that God has given us a clean slate, we are free to worship him. We are free to come in this church every Sunday and Monday through Saturday if we need to. And worship him in the beauty of holiness. Because we're clean now. We're not serving him with unclean hands anymore. He has washed us and made us clean. Now are we perfect? No. Do we still make mistakes? Yes. Yes. Do we still sin? Yes. Yes. But does God still forgive us? Yes. So the devil can't come in the God accusing him. Uh, Reverend Wynn, I saw her the other day, and she was, get out of here, Satan. She is free. I'll take care of her. I don't need you coming in here accusing me, accusing her of whatever. And so when you tell the person who's talking about you, you're right. You know what's going to happen? You just shut the proverbial mouth of the line. That's right. And tell them to go tell that. Yeah. You talking so much, yeah. talk about this other thing. Uh-huh. You shut their mouth because I tell you people, we can't lose with God on our side. And finally, Paul asked the question that settles it all. He said, can anything, anything anything ever separate us from Christ's love? And his answer was found in verse 37. He said, there is nothing. So he goes from all things to nothing. All things. Nothing. Nothing in this world can separate us from God. Love. Another translation says, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. We've already won, y'all. You see, we are operating from the finish line. Y'all think you have to win victory? Nuh-uh, it's already been won. We already got it. Now let's act like we are children of God and we know it. And give this world something to talk about. Because they're going to look at us. And they're going to wonder how we can say we're walking from victory when there's sickness. When there's sorrow. When there's pain. But that doesn't mean God doesn't love us. What he is trying to do is to build us up, to look to him to trust, to look to trust him above all odds. And it's not a blind trust. It's a trust based on experience. It's a trust based on relationship. If you don't have a relationship with somebody, you are not going to trust them very far. Because you don't know them. And that's why we tell our children, don't, don't talk to strangers. Don't get in a car with strangers. Don't go anywhere because you can't trust them. You don't have no relationship with them. That's right. 
God does not sit on the sidelines watching us struggle. But he's in the game with us. He's calling the plays. We may fall down, but we get up again yeah. and again uh-huh. and again yeah. and again. Yeah. If life gives us thorns instead of roses, we find ourselves destitute or hunger, hungry or in danger or even threatened with death. All we need to do is look toward the hill from where our help comes from, because yeah. it comes from God. Yeah. When I first got in the hospital bed, I was praying to God to not let me die. After a few days, I was praying to God to let me die. And that's how we go back and forth with that. But God pronounced to me, you shall live and not die. Yeah. Because with him, I could not lose. He was on my side. Yeah. Nothing or no one can separate us from God's love. And I'm not talking about this candy and flowers kind of love Come on now. that wants to know what you've done for them lately. Uh, not that kind of love. I'm talking about a love that will stoop down yeah. and pick you up. Yeah. A love that will stoop down and pick you up out of the pit. A love that will turn you around. Yeah. A love that will place your feet on solid ground. Uh-huh. That's the kind of love I'm talking about. Yeah. A kind of love that's going to wipe all our tears away one yeah. day. The kind of love that will cause trouble to cease from troubling us. Uh-huh. The kind of love that's God's love. Yeah. His unconditional love. Oh His unfailing love. Yeah. That our little minds can't even grasp. Because the first thing we ask, well, God, why you love me so much? And he says, because you're mine. What parent in here does not love that child? I don't care what your child does. God is our father. And he said, even we being evil can give good things to our children then how much does a good God give good things to his children? Mm-hmm. Think about it. Yeah. If we're fearing, you're not thinking. Yeah. If you're worried, you're not thinking. Come on. If you're feeling guilty, you're not thinking about what God has done for us already. Mm-hmm. So Paul starts to personalize that thing. He says, look, I'm persuaded. I'm convinced. There's not a doubt in my mind. Uh I don't care what nobody says. There is nothing that can ever separate us from God's love. Uh Not the vicissitudes of life or the fear of death. Not the things we're presently going through Uh or the things that we will surely go through. Not any power in the sky or on the earth. Mm -hmm. Nothing. No one is greater than God. Yeah. And guess what? Greater is he that's in me Amen. than he that's in this world. Oh, yeah. We are on God's team. Mm-hmm. For he is the one who called us. Yeah. He's the one who chose us. Uh-huh. I know y'all said y'all found Jesus, but y'all ain't find him. He wasn't lost. <laughs> you, you were lost. All of y'all, everybody, me too. Because we're all sinners, saved by grace. God came looking for us. And so we're on his team. And the Holy Spirit is on his team to keep us until Jesus returns. See, David was convinced when he penned the 23rd Psalm. At the end of that Psalm, David says, surely... Surely, 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 goodness and mercy is going to follow me all the days of my life. Uh And I'm going to dwell in the house of the Lord, not just one day, not just two days, Uh not just three days, but forever. Forever. I'm going to be with God. Uh And I say it again, and I keep saying we can't lose with God on our side. Uh And all of us know that Christ's death was not the end of the story. Yeah, he died on the cross. 
They buried him. Yes. He stayed in the grave ah. a couple of days. But he got up. Yes. He got up. He got up. God called him early one Sunday morning. Oh, yeah. And death had to release him. Uh -huh. Oh, death, where is your sting? Yes. Oh, grave, where is your where victory? Is and now he's seated at God's right hand with all power. Uh -huh. With all power. That's anything life can throw at you, yeah. throw it back. Because yeah. God has all power, all power. in his hand. Yeah. And he's interceding for us. Uh -huh. You know what happens when Jesus prays? God listens. Yeah. And God does it. Yeah. Because Jesus prays according to God's will. And some of us pray according to our will. Yeah. Give me that big car. Uh -huh. Give me that big house. Uh -huh. Give me that big job. Uh -huh. Give me that big, big, big. <laughs> when I ride around the city and see all these storage units, you know what I say to myself? People got too much stuff. <laughs> That's right. When you got to put it in a storage unit, you got too much stuff. Don't need all that stuff. Yeah. Because you know what you spend your time is? Doing, protecting the stuff. Mm. Where thieves can come in and steal it. Mm. But when you have the eternal stuff, uh -huh. nobody can steal nobody. it. Not your joy, yeah. not your peace, uh -huh. not your love, okay. nothing no. can they steal. One day, soon and very soon, we're going to see him face to face. Yeah. We will bow down to the king of glory. And who is the king of glory? Yeah. The Lord strong and mighty uh -huh. in battle. Yeah. He is the king of glory. And he is on our side. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We can't lose, my brothers and sisters. It's impossible for us to lose. Uh -huh. Because God is on our side. Now somebody tell the Lord, thank you. Thank you. God be the glory. This was just a message to encourage you. To encourage you that the battle is not over right. and the battle is not ours right. it's God right. let us stand please Amen. if you don't take anything away take the fact that we can't lose because God is on our side oh, yeah. Just think of, I mean, when, you, you, when you think about it, you go, how can I not believe? The one who created heaven and earth is on your side. The one who put the stars in the sky is on your side. The one who came down for in two generations is on your side. He won't leave you alone. Amen. And I know we all have family in here today because no one stood up as a visitor. But we don't want our family not knowing God. Yeah. So if there's somebody in here that does not know God as with, for the forgiveness of your sin and not repented, Jesus is waiting yeah. for your response. How are you going to respond to him today? Is it going to be yes? Or is it going to be no? Secondly, you may have said yes to God years ago, but some kind of way the world got in your way and you strayed. God said, come on back. Because until you close your eyes, there is hope. That's right. Hope of glory. And then the third thing. We at Union Branch, we are a family of believers. 
We are a family that trusts God. We are a family that will pray with you, pray for you, take you by the hand, and share your burdens with you. So if you want to be a part of this family, we are waiting to receive you. Salvation, restoration, or joining this family. And let us prepare for our Holy Communion. There's a lifting of a hand. I'm going to pull the table out. There's a lifting of a heart. There's a lifting of the eyes. Beyond the hill to where our help comes from. There's a lifting of a hand. There's a lifting of a heart. There's a lifting of the eyes beyond the hills to where our help comes from. What is the Lord's Supper? Holy Communion is the sacred ordinance established by the Lord Jesus during his last Passover meal with his disciples. When we partake in communion, we are in fellowship with Christ Jesus. When we partake of this sacrament, let us meditate on him and consider all that he has done for us and how he is still with us. This is a moment of reflection and remembrance. So let us allow these sac sacred elements and the mere silence itself to speak to our busy souls. Father God, it's once again, God, we come to your table in remembrance of you who died, but you rose again. And with your resurrection, you have brought us to new life. We ask, for God, that as we partake of these sacred elements, that they be transformed into your body and your blood so that they can create in us a new person. Bless us, oh God. Bless us, oh God. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.